Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club Outdoor Edition. Today we're going to be talking about wearing a boutonniere flower. So I figured it would be appropriate to be outdoors in the garden to discuss that. Today I'm wearing my Pete Lapel Spear and McKay Navy sport coat with white buttons, something I talked about in another video. Uh, more dandyish than I might usually wear. I call this almost full yacht club. I got white trousers on, as you may have seen as I walked up. And I uh, thought that this white oxide daisy would go well, and uh, lapel flower or boutonniere being sort of the finishing touch on the outfit. Since I am already doing more of a bold kind of dandyish outfit, I thought the flower would be a nice touch. I wanted to talk about how to do that effectively. So back in the, back in the day, say the 1920s or thereabouts, boutonnieres were commonplace for gentlemen. Uh, some of you may remember times when people wore them, and I'm talking about natural flowers as well. These days, you don't actually see them much except for weddings and for proms. And in those situations, they're usually these massive things that look like a whole bouquet of flowers. So I wouldn't definitely recommend against going that route. But if you go back and you watch episodes of uh, Hercule Poirot, or you watch uh, Jeeves and Wooster, the series from the 90s, both of them, I guess, series from the 90s, you'll see uh, boutonnieres worn a lot. Poirot wears, uh, actually wears a decorative vase in some, in some episodes where uh, that, that is filled with water and it's pinned in or goes into the lapel hole, uh, the buttonhole, and you can actually put a flower in there and it stays fresher during the day because it contains some water. Um, there's an episode I think of Jeeves and Wooster where Bertie leaves his flat and purchases a flower from the flower cellar which is located right outside uh, his apartment building. So in those days, especially if you lived in an urban area, uh, you have opportunities of buying flowers to wear as a buttonhole. Uh, but nowadays, it's very difficult to find that. You can certainly go to the florist and pick some out uh, if you want. Uh, but even then, difficult to find the right sort of flower. So if you're lucky enough to have a garden, or if you see flowers that you like growing in a, an area where you're allowed to pick them, I would recommend trying one out. Uh, this is an oxide daisy. Uh, I have a garden here. And my wife and I have uh, created sort of a wildlife habitat, so we have a lot of wildflowers growing. Uh, oxide daisy appeared on its own. We didn't plant it. It's a European plant. I believe it comes from England, or the, uh, Britain, I should say. And just the right touch for this because it is white, and I'm wearing blue and white exclusively as, as uh, the entire outfit being blue and white. Uh, it does have an additional yellow center, so I'm adding another touch of color that goes along with blue and white. You will always wear yellow with blue and with white. So the key to doing this is, first of all, to pick one that's about the right size. As I said before, no huge boutonnieres, huge flowers, also problematic in my mind. I don't even like to use large roses or carnations. If you do a carnation, I would do a small one, one of those mini carnations. If you do a rose, miniature rose, something along those lines. Huge things, too overwhelming. A second rule of thumb that I have is not to wear a pocket square if I'm wearing a boutonniere. They're both on the same side of your jacket, and if you double them, it looks like you're going one step too far. As I said in my other video, a good tip is to take away one accessory. So if this is your accessory, forget about the pocket square. Uh, you can try both. Some people can pull it off, and back in the day, again, um, men would wear both of those things at the same time. But those were, other, those were different times, and today you really come across as dandyish and overdressed. If that's what you're going for, then fine. If you want to keep it subdued, then just one or the other. And then you want to pick a, a flower, again, that's the right size and the right color to coordinate with your outfit. As I said before, I chose this one because it goes well with what I'm wearing. Um, make sure you pick one that is not covered with insects, and you want one that's fresh and kind of even and looks good. Right? There's a whole batch of daisies growing there on the lawn. I wanted to get one that had even petals, so this is kind of at the right stage of development. It doesn't look worn out, and um, it's not covered with bugs either. Right? Some of them have insects crawling on them, and I wanted to keep the insects out of my shirt and out of my jacket, so I'm trying to get one that was not bug infested. Also be careful with it. These have sap or plant juices of various kinds, so they can stain your jackets. And if you're wearing something like a white linen sport coat, you want to be careful with getting uh, plant juices on it. You have to send it to the dry cleaner. And some, some plant substances are quite difficult to remove uh, easily from clothing. So be careful with that as well. Uh, cut it 
at the right length. You want to be able to fit it under here so that it goes all the way down and stands up and doesn't pop out. So if it's too short, if the stem is too short, it'll pop out. If the stem is too long, this one is a little too long, you'll see it here as well peeking out. So you want to get it about the right length, but it's best to err on the side of length to, to go longer, and then you can simply snip this later uh, with nail clippers or with a small pair of scissors. Just want to tuck that there, and uh, there you have it. Easy to do. Uh, it will last approximately several hours. Um, I've had another one in here earlier today. It's around 85 degrees, and it lasted from roughly 1 o'clock till 5 before it started wilting in the heat and humidity. Um, if, you, if the weather is not as intense, it'll probably last you an hour or two longer, uh, but enough to, to go for an evening out or part of the afternoon uh, without worrying about it wilting. Certainly you can buy uh, artificial boutonniere flowers. Those are fine because you can reuse them, though they always look fake in some way, and having a real one adds a bit of authenticity. The ephemeral nature of it, the fact that it's temporary and doesn't last forever, also gives it some extra beauty uh, as well. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, like the video and follow us at Gentleman Scholars Club for more tips, advice, and uh, brand information related to classic menswear. As always, thanks for watching.